If you've been following me for a while, you should know by now that I'm all about making videos on a budget. So much so that my evolution of cameras looks like this. Canon T5, Canon T5i, Sony a6300, and then Sony a6400. So you see, I never even broke the $1,000 mark for a camera, nor did I even upgrade all too much from one model to the next one. By now, you should have seen me push these cameras to their limits. I decided to treat myself for my birthday and I finally pulled the trigger on the Blackmagic Pocket, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. BMPCC 4K retails for around $1,300, but after taxes, it's more like $1,400. So I did finally break that $1,000 mark for a camera. Now, how much of an upgrade is this from what I normally shoot with? This camera could shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second shoots 12-bit with a raw codec. 4K at 60 frames per second means I get to shoot slow motion footage at four times higher resolution than what I was previously shooting with. So not only will everything look much sharper and much cleaner, but I also have the option to crop in and reframe shots without losing image quality. Now, 12-bit refers to the color depth. I'm not gonna go too deep into the math behind why it's called 12-bit, but all you have to know is that 12-bit video is going to have better looking colors than 8-bit video. This is because 12-bit video has so much more possible shade values per color channel than video shot with a lower color depth. All this really means is the gradation from one color to the next one is going to be a lot smoother and more pleasing to the eye, as opposed to having something like banding occur. 12-bit also makes color grading a lot easier and potentially more fun. Because of how many color combinations are possible with 12-bit, you could push the colors around in almost any direction and you won't suffer from a degraded image by having color artifacts or increased noise. In a nutshell, 12-bit will keep your image looking clean while you color grade the hell out of it. The Pocket 4K now uses Blackmagic RAW instead of Cinema DNG like it did previously. So instead of having individual frames and these gigantic file sizes, we just have one decently sized file with the flexibility of RAW. Normally with smaller codecs, whatever you record in camera is baked into the footage and that's all you have to edit with. So if you shot at ISO 1000 and you're accidentally overexposed and your highlights are clipped, that's your shot. That's what you have to work with and it's going to be very difficult recovering some of those details, if at all possible. Or let's say you got your white balance messed up in camera. Well, you could try to fix it in post with color grading, but with the limitations of 8-bit and depending how far off your white balance was, it could be pretty tough. There's not much you could do in changing the white balance of the footage, unless you shoot RAW. Blackmagic RAW allows you to control some of the metadata in post. So that botched ISO and white balance can actually be changed in DaVinci Resolve after you shot it. Then you could color grade however you want as if it was shot correctly. Blackmagic RAW also has some insane dynamic range and highlight recoverability. I have yet to test just how much I can overexpose and still recover highlights, but in my latest real estate gig, I was able to expose for the inside while still maintaining a crazy amount of detail outside the windows. It is just insane how clean and crisp everything looks with this camera. In the upcoming videos, I'm going to go over some things that I did to make this camera work for my needs. So if you're at all interested in seeing that, make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, I have some goodies in the description box down below. Be sure to check that out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.